I'm Shane with Precision Turf and today we're going to be doing mower comparisons, specifically stand-on mower comparisons. And we got three for you today to compare against each other. We have the Skag V-Ride 2, we have the Cub Cadet Pro X600, and the Gravely Pro Stance. Now we're going to be walking you through different comparisons based on what we know about the lawn care industry and how things work and what we're looking for specifically, but we're going to give plenty of information for you to make an informed decision. Now all of these mowers are great mowers. Gravely makes a great product. Cub Cadet makes a great product. You need to see it for yourself. When I, when I say Cub Cadet, you're thinking residential. It's not. It's a great product. And Skag makes a great product. So we're going to give you enough information to make a good informed decision for yourself based on what your application is, what your needs are. S stay with us. It's going to be a lot action-packed, not action-packed, but a lot of good information to help you make that decision. Now let me give you just a little bit more information that way you can follow along better. The reason that we're looking at these three mowers is because we have two Skag V-Ride 2 machines right now that have over 700 hours on them. We've been running them for two and a half years and we just want to see how the competition stands up to see if we want to move to a different mower or stay with the Skag V-Rides. Now the reason it's these three specific mowers is because this is these are the mowers that we feel like we're going to get the best support from, the best dealer. We're looking for a good dealer with a good machine. The way we're going to rank these machines is just a 1-2-3 system. If you're the best, you get a 1. If you're the worst in that category, you get a 3. We're going to go through 10 categories and see how they stack up against each other. Now this is like golf. The lowest score is probably going to be the best. However, pay attention to the different categories to see which categories line up with your needs and your application the best. And a little disclaimer, we put these mowers on one of the toughest properties we have. What I mean by that is, we live in Texas, we have thick bahia grass here on a lot of our properties. And this is a two week growth on this property. We're not cutting easy stuff here, we're putting it through the ringer. So the first thing that we're going to talk about with each one of these mowers is cut quality. Now, everybody can have their own opinion on cut quality, but when side by side at this property, what we notice for the cut quality of each of these, number one cut quality, Skag. Skag mow through the bahia grass, the thick two week growth bahia grass, like it was no problem, and it put a good cut on it. Skag, hands down, I've thought for a long time, gives the best cut quality. Number two, Gravely. Gravely was a close second. Now when I say the difference, the difference is close, it's close. Gravely was a close second. And that may have had to do with the engine horsepower, but as far as the cut quality of what it was laying down, there weren't many spots we had to go back over other than all the extra grass that had clumped up that we had to disperse. Number three was Cub Cadet. Cub Cadet, still a good cut, mowing through some thick stuff. However, it just didn't stand up to the cut quality of the Skag and the Gravely. Skag 1, Gravely 2, Cub Cadet 3. Number two, ride comfort. You're going to be standing on these mowers all day. You want to be comfortable. You don't want to get home and be exhausted because you've been fighting your mower all day. Now, all I'm telling you, all of the new stand-on mowers are pretty comfortable. They're getting their designs down. But based on what we saw today, the most comfortable mower to ride, and we were riding this mower for, for up to two hours, was the Cub Cadet. It gave you the most cushioning on your dampeners on your where you stand. It felt like you were part of the mower. You're standing inside the mower. Uh, it just felt good. And you can also, the Cub Cadet, a cool feature that, that they have is there's an adjustment lever for different weights or more dampening or less dampening. So if you're hitting a super smooth yard, you may want to turn, turn that thing down to one and so that you're, you're really floating. It really is a comfortable mower. The number two is the Skag. Skags felt good. We've run Skags for two and a half years and they hold up. They feel good. Skags are pretty comfortable to ride all day and there's times and properties that we are on these machines for over eight hours a day. The platform where you stand on the Skag is comfortable. There's plenty of room. It feels like you're in the machine. The bolster pads are good. You can lean into it. The only complaint that I have is they need to work on their dampening system or their springs or however they're going to do that. There's times where you hit a big enough bump where you just you bottom out on those springs. And that, when you do that, you feel it in your back. And that's, that's why people are getting away from sit downs is because you do feel so much in your back. When you get home from a long day of riding a sit down, you feel it in your back and you're tired. But riding a, a stander, you feel a little bit more alive at the end of the day. So Skag, if you're listening, 
work on your platform and your dampening system to increase that rider comfort a little bit, a little bit more. It's not terrible, and it only happens when property is super rough. Gravely. Gravely was comfortable, but the Gravely is not made like the Skag and the Cup Cadet. You see Wright mowers, many years ago when they came out with the stand-on system, they developed a patent to where the operator is inside, kind of inside the mower. So everything is a little bit more compact and you're, you're squished in there, but you're able to feel, be inside the machine, almost feel that way. Well, that patent has been lifted. And so that's why you're seeing all these companies like really get in this game of stand-on mowers is because the patent lifted and now everybody feels like they can create a machine that is up to right standards and got in a lot of companies have done a great job of that gravely is still I'm not gonna say they're behind the curve it's a decision that they made to keep their existing platform of standing behind the mower so you're behind the mower not necessarily inside the mower so the rider comfort at times feels like you're hanging off the back it's almost as if it's a stand, it's a walk behind mower that you can also stand on. The great thing about the Gravely is that you can fold up your platform and walk behind it if you need to. Cup Cadet number one, Skag number two, Gravely number three. Number three, hillside stability. Now this is a lot of reason why you guys and gals out there running lawn care businesses want a stand on mower. Is number one, when you're on a hill with a stand on mower, they're a lot safer. If you need to bail, you can bail. Now, how many times have you guys bailed on a hill? If you're bailing on a hill all the time, then you don't need to be mowing the hill. Grab your weed eater and get back out there and weed eat that hill. But the safety is you can get off of that mower and get away from it versus a sit-down mower. How many of you guys have rode a sit-down mower on a hill with your legs all propped up just ready to bail? That's not safe. I know that our skags will hold a hill. I'm pretty sure that that Cub Cadet will hold a hill because its stance and the way it uh, sits is really similar to a Skag. And I did put a, that Gravely on a small hill today just to test it out, and it did really well. I was really surprised. But this is something that you need to get a demo for yourself and see how it holds the hills that you guys are running. There's some hills that you just can't put any mower on. But there's some hills that you guys mow every week that you need to know that that mower can handle that hill. I'll say that all three of these, I, my personal opinion is that this, I know the Skag will hold a hill because we've done it. So in this case, our experience with the Skag won out on this one. We know the Skag will hold hills because we've put it on hills before. The Cub Cadet came in second place because the stance of the Cub Cadet is really similar to the Skag. And we had it on a few small hills and it felt pretty good. The Gravely came in three. I did put the Gravely on a hill and it did fine. The only thing that holds me back a little bit is the design of the mower. Because there is more weight towards the front of the mower as compared to the other mowers, science will tell you that when you pull weight towards the front, that it takes weight off the back. So the, the other two mowers, you have a central stance and a central weight point, and the Gravely is a little bit more spread out. Again, please get these mowers for yourself. Demo these to make your own decision. Number four sideways four. Number four, hydraulics and controls. How does the system feel to you? We're not talking about the size of the pumps. We're talking about how does the system feel to you on the mower. We're gonna give this one to Skag. When you're riding the Skag, you feel part of your mower. You're working those lines. You're trying to keep it straight. As you push forward, the pressure feels right. And maybe it's just what we've gotten used to, but the pressure feels right as compared to the other two. And when you let off, there's enough pressure coming back to where you're not, you're just letting, if you wanna let your right tire off, you let it off and it brings it back to you. It feels like just the right amount of dampening and pressure in the hydraulics to give you the response that you need. Number two, Cub Cadet. Cub Cadet was really close on this one. That one felt good too. It almost felt, it felt a lot like a Skag, but just if I was giving them points or a grading system, Skag would be a 94, and Cub Cadet would be a 91. So really, literally not that far apart. When you give it and you're working working those lines uh, with your thumbs and that, uh, your palm right here, you don't feel like it's too much work and you can hang on the distance between where you need to be on your front bar. You can hang on and, and work your controls that way. It felt really good. Number three, Gravely. It was pretty, I felt like Gravely was pretty far behind. Gravely, the dampening system on the controls 
I felt like I had to leave my hands on top of the controls instead of behind. So on top of the controls and when I wanted to work it, I'm putting pressure down on the top and pulling my hand forward uh, from the rail up front. The reason I did that is because the dampeners would not come back on their own. So if I wanted to go forward, I'm putting my hand around the rail and pulling forward. And then when I wanted to, to, to work it back a little bit to keep those lines straight, I had to actually have pressure on the top of the control and then work it back that way. So it just didn't feel natural. It was a little bit jumpy compared to the other two. And I would guess that's because of the hydraulic pump size. One Skag, two Cub Cadet, three Gravely. Number five. Get excited, right? Mm -hmm. Number five, the deck lift. Now this is where the Cub Cadet really shines. Their deck lift system is second to none. I'm telling from from what I've run before, Cub Cadet is second to none. It is amazing what those engineers have done with that deck lift system. You can literally lift it with one finger without put you, putting your knee in the pad. You guys know if you've run standards, if you ever have to float that deck, if you're going over a hill or something, you don't want to scalp or you're coming down in a ditch or you see something and you just got to raise it real quick, most of the time you're just figuring out a way around it. You're not floating that deck. But this is a new opportunity for you for a Cub Cadet where you can actually float that deck. I, as I'm riding, if I need to float the deck on the Cub Cadet, I'm switching my hand from two hand controls to one hand control. So we're, we're working like this and I can grab that handle and just feather it. It is that easy. It's such an, they have done amazing work, which really, you need to ride one to figure it out. It really changes the game and it makes me think, gosh, can we not do this on every mower? I'm sure they have a patent on it because it's really, really awesome technology. Now, the reliability of it, I don't know, nobody knows. We're gonna have to figure out a couple years later if the the way they've done their pulley system and everything will hold up, but I'm telling you for now, it is, an, is a game changer. Number two on that scale is Gravely. Gravely has done some things to help the operator out in the floating process. Floating is important. If you ride sit down mowers all day, you know that that foot is on your, that deck bar, that lifter, whatever you wanna call it, your foot's on that all day. You, you will wear out your shoe in the middle or right here, wherever you keep your foot on that all day. And it's because you float your deck all day. You float it all day. And so you know your yards, you know where the holes are, you know where the bad spots are, you know how to cut it to make sure that it looks perfect for your customer. So what Gravely has done is they put that deck floating bar on your backside of your platform. In order to float properly, you're still going to have to go to a one hand, one hand control as you're working your controls with one hand. And you need to grab your bar and you put your foot on the deck float where the foot goes and then feather it that way because it's, it's still heavy. Number three on that list is Skag. You're riding a Skag B ride too, you just don't float the deck. You figure out, you set it and you forget it. If you're on three and a half inches, you mow three and a half inches and you hope that you don't scalp. You learn your yards and you mow around things that you need to mow around in the way that you need to mow around them because the deck is not floating. Cup Cadet, one. Gravely, two. Skag, three. Number six. Number six, reverse. You wouldn't think reverse is that important, but there was a reason we put it on this list. There was a situation that made me think about this as I was riding the Gravely around the back of the house is that I was four passes out and a kid walks outside. Well, I'm four passes out, I'm blowing, I would started blowing back into the house or towards the house at that point at four passes. So kid walks outside, so I'm halfway through my line. I just flip it around and reverse it and I need to go about 40 feet, 30 feet. I need to go about 30 feet backwards to finish my line. I did that and as I'm going backwards on the Gravely, it really goes like one miles an hour. So Gravely, if you're listening, this is something that you guys can really fix. You can adjust that on a Gravely uh, by adjusting your controls, but I'm pretty sure that if you adjust that on, a, on the controls on a Gravely, the more you adjust it to get more backwards, the less you're gonna get forwards, and you need every bit of what you can get forwards on a Gravely. So Skag comes in first here with a reverse speed of six miles an hour. Cub Cadet comes in second here with a reverse speed of five miles an hour, and then the Gravely in third. Number seven ease of maintenance. We're gonna give this one to the Gravely. And there's a couple reasons for this. 
First reason is I absolutely love the pulley covers on the Gravely. I hope they're gonna hold up over time, but it's just like a suction cup on top of the pulleys. It, it really is so amazing. How many times do you guys take those little knobs off and then you go to put them back on, you can only find one. You say, well, I'll find another one tomorrow. And then you end up operating with one. And then seven days later, you take them off again and you lose the other one. Or it pops, it works its way out. And then you just take the covers off. Gravely has designed a system where it's just a pop on, pop off. Another thing that they've done is leave an opening on the end of those pulley covers. How much junk gets caught up under your pulley covers and then that junk that doesn't have openings and then that junk is staying on your belt unless you know you're blowing it off at the end of each job but it's rubbing on your belt and maybe you don't get a chance to clean it till the end of the day you're so busy so they design these openings in the end of the pulley covers that just blow it out without even taking the covers off when you're washing your mower just wash right through it really really good idea um, it is really easy to get to the pulleys themselves uh, in the front of the deck on the side of the deck and part of that is because of the way they designed the mower They didn't take that right pattern and put you like kind of inside the mower the deck is actually in front of Your your stance position so it leaves plenty of room for you to work on those pulleys uh, springs, you know if you got to replace a, a Spindle or anything that's that's going to be easy to do number two cup cadet because there is not a grease point on that mower the level of maintenance is easy now I'm still not sold on grease points, non-grease points. I just it's I have a hard time understanding that hey a mower has a thousand hours on it and I've never put grease in it. Is it gonna hold up? It might, it might not, I don't know. I know Toro went to a system a, a while ago about uh, greaseless spindles, X mark, um, I think gravely. Um, let's I wanna hear you guys' opinion. Do do you like the non-greasable or would you rather put grease in your spindles and at other other junctions, parts of your mowers. So number one is Gravely, number two is Cup Cadet, and number three is Skag. Number eight, number eight. Just by looking at the parts, I would say that the Gravely is going to be the easiest to level. The other thing that's kind of unique to us is easy adjustment. So if your deck gets out of adjustment, all you do is loosen these, raise and lower this, now guys, very much guys, let me tell you, if you've ever tried to adjust a deck, you know, you look at the uh, the ways to adjust it and you think, oh man, no big deal. And then you get out on your yard and you're cutting lines and, you're, and your lines where you're going back and forth look like this. So that is right. not easy to do. That's right. Number two, Cup Cadet. Very similar, but different. Also looked like it would be easier to level than a Skag. Obviously, number three is a Skag. We've tried to level that deck before. It's tighten this up, loosen this up, and there's a spacer in between here. You you move the spacer, make sure the spacer stays in there, tighten this back up and loosen that back up to level. I don't know. We tried to level and I feel like we failed. Um, it just, it shouldn't be that hard. So Skag, if you're listening to your customer, please create a better, easier system for your customers to level their deck. We want to be able to work on our own equipment up to a certain extent. I would prefer to fix everything in-house except engine work. And if I can, that's gonna save us a lot of money. And for all you other, every company out there, if we can fix our own mowers, it just creates more brand loyalty. We're gonna come back to you and buy more mowers. Guarantee it, guarantee it. Gravely one, Cup Cadet two, Skag number three. Number nine, engine. We're gonna go, we're gonna judge this based on the engines that the mowers have. We're gonna give this one to the, to the Skag. I know a lot of you guys out there are Kawasaki guys or Kohler guys or Honda guys or Briggs & Stratton guys. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not either one of those guys. I want the mower that's right for the machine. The Skag has a Kohler EFI. It's a 29 horse, I believe. And we've been running it for two and a half years. It's never let us down. It's never let us down. We've had Kawasaki's in the past that were good. We've had Kawasaki's in the past that weren't good. I've had Kohler's in the past that weren't good. So. Based on what we ran today, that Skag Kohler EFI has always done what we needed it to. Now with the EFI, you need to make sure that you keep everything clean. That is very important. You're working off electronics and clean air. Uh, it's a lot more computer 
stuff going on with the EFI. So make sure your filters are clean, make sure you're, you're replacing your plugs and doing all the, the recommended maintenance on time. Keep your machine clean. Number two, the Gravely with the Kawasaki EFI. Now I was really impressed with this machine. So the only reason that the Kohler EFI beat it is because of time in the market. Kawasaki is relatively new to the EFI game on mowers and so we don't know about the reliability yet. We don't know whether they're gonna hold up, but I'll tell you one thing, is that that Kawasaki on that Gravely Pro Stance was incredible. You could hear that thing gearing up, sound like a, like a wound up four wheeler. And when it hit grass and it needed the power, it gave it to it. And it would cut, it would motor through that stuff. It was really, really nice. Number three, obviously, is the Cub Cadet Pro X 600. Pro X 600 had a carbureted engine. They do not offer EFI engines, and it just didn't give you, it didn't give as much power, I felt like, as the other two options. It still cut fine. It did everything that it needed to do. I would just love to see an EFI option on that Cub Cadet. Number one, Skag. Number two, Gravely. Number three, Cub Cadet. Number 10 warranty so instead of telling you about it we're just going to throw a graphic up on the screen and label them one two three what's the best here you go these warranties are words on the screen now if you've had dealings with these companies before you know if they uphold these warranties or not and it all depends on the dealer that you're getting these machines from whether they're backing the warranties up or not so that is completely up to you Cadet came in at number one because their warranty on paper looks like one of the best warranties in the industry. Now, only time will tell if that holds true and I really hope that it does. The totals come out to Cub Cadet with 19, Gravely with 22, and Skag with 19. So remember that the lower score is the better score because of how we were ranking them. This doesn't mean that Cub Cadet or Skag is better at everything and that's the mowers that you should buy. Again, I want to stress that these mowers are different for every application. So you may find an application that the Gravely suits you better, or the Cub Cadet, or the Skag. Demo these machines, get a hold to your dealer, and if they won't demo initially, find another dealer. Get on these machines and find out. I will tell you that it was pretty easy to get a Cub Cadet and a Gravely demo. We didn't need to get a Skag because we already had them but we just called a few of our dealers in the area and lined those things out. And thanks for watching. I know this was a long one. There was a lot of good information. We learned a lot and we're thankful to the guys that brought mowers out to us. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up, smash that thing, smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. We're gonna continue to do things like this. Listen, our goal is to help you, to help other guys and ladies in the lawn care industry. That's our goal, we wanna help. Um, and like we enjoy doing videos like this so help us and subscribe to our channel and, and give us a thumbs up and share them or, or whatever and we're going to continue to provide valuable content for you guys out there. If there's something you want to see, something you want to know about and we have the ability to do it, let us know in the comments. Um, tell us what you want to know about what you want to see. Thanks for watching. <laughs>